Rosemary Eng, uh, things are getting pretty hot in the USA v. PDX case, and this is a video in which I would like to apologize to Judy Prosper. And I might need to make ten of these to get it all off my chest, because it's so deeply upsetting, the uh, bureaucratic wars that are going on within the USA v. PDX case. So why I need to apologize to Judy Prosper is that I was invited by Judge Michael Simon as a member of the audience, as a participant, as a whistleblower, as a citizen, as an observer, blogger, journalist, filmmaker, YouTuber, advocate, loved one, all the many hats, including trained in paralegal department of Los Angeles City College, to approach the court. And I was signed up at random based on how long it took me to drink my coffee, so then I went back inside. The court was harassing and assaulting Hardesty, so I was under threat of physical violence, again, including the physical violence that was applied to me in June to punish me for my work um, in the Benjamin Pickering case. So uh, I, I happened to be, by coincidence or by accident, signed up after David Keith Davis, who I had known on a acquaintance basis because of uh, occurrences at City Council in Portland. I then spoke after him. Uh, for me, I felt particularly that I need an apology because I felt like my ability to speak, as well as the time that I was allowed to speak, was unfairly doled. Certain people get more time, usually men. Certain people get less time, usually women. I'm one of the usually women. And this is not just Judge Simon. This is Charlie Hales. This is the world. <laughs> this oh, the whole sexist world. So I was a, a bit affronted by that myself personally when Judge Simon denied me adequate speaking time. But as it was going on, of course, everybody's hungry and they want to go and it's time to go. It's like getting close to five or something. But I apologize to Judy Prosper. I wish I had put her name into the record as the person that I was apologizing because then it would be more clear in the transcript. But I looked her in the face, in the eyes, and I was able to come up with the words that I could summon, which were that that was disgraceful and that I wanted to personally apologize. So this video is an additional apology for the words that came from David Keith Davis and are deemed if offensive according to all these memoranda, according to my original impression, the courtroom itself was pretty much <gasps> gasping like, did you really say that? And then the thing that I think is missing is that David Keith Davis is the Jewish person. Judy Prosper is evidently black Haitian, which I wasn't quite clear on that. And the the mayor, who's like white Anglo, has been persecuting the Jewish man. Bud Fulis, biologically born white male, then transgendering in some state of transness, is harassing the Jewish man. When the Jewish man is harassed and harassed and assaulted and beaten, in what then appears he's lashing out at the black woman by saying, go back to Haiti, I have t spoken to Kate Davis enough to understand his policy or his uh, purported self-awareness is, I'm not racist, I'm for black radicals, but I don't like it when black people are used by cruel or, or despotic regimes. So I'm not saying that's what he meant, but that's my understanding of what he might have meant, but it came out completely wrong. And there may be something else going on there. I don't know. And I think I owe it to Miss Prosper to say, yes, I absolutely agree that you should have it in writing, that you should have it at city council, that you, you should point this out and draw people's attention to that portion of the transcript. And once that happens, guess who's speaking next is me, speaking about the four county failure of Ben Pickering, the assault and retaliation against my person and my body. So. The court has no problem with brutalizing me, with protecting the brutalizers of me, 
The mayor is getting away with murder in terms of brutalizing people, persecuting people on a Jewish holiday, Yom Kippur. So we have multiple levels of different racial dynamics, unlimited, unchecked persecution of Jewish people, use of a neo-Nazi to intimidate them at meetings. And the whole gaslighting effect is that I would say yes, David Keith Davis's speech was perfect until that portion. I would scratch that. That was filthy, it was disturbing, it reminds me of my grandmother, Mary Kangas, telling me there was no Holocaust. It was disgraceful and pitiful and terrible, and I can't apologize enough. But similarly, the city owes an apology for their targeted racial harassment of Jewish people. And because they don't do that, and then they use black people to continue to persecute Jewish people, they come off as disingenuous, especially when Tracy Reeve hit the swastikas of the neo-Nazi, Mark Kruger, in the city attorney office. So for maximum clarity's sake, I think it would behoove the city not to only continue to attack David Keith Davis after they've crushed his wrists, arrested him falsely, prosecuted him through months and months of harassment, harassed him and gaslit him. I think they're, they're now taking, sort of taking the bait or the monster that they've created by their cruelty and brutality and harassment, including cyberbullying, racial harassment, calling him a skinhead online, which did seem to irk Michael Simon, who I come to find out is potentially possibly Jewish or Jewish identifying or whatever. So Jewish people don't like Jewish people to be persecuted. Black people don't like black people to be persecuted. That's universal. Miss Tracy Reeve is persecuting Jewish people when she protects the neo-Nazi in the police department. So when she is defending the black Haitian woman, city attorney, Judy Prosper, that's important, but it's not the whole picture. The whole picture is total anti-racism, which the city's not on board with total anti-racism. They are completely fine and content to persecute me because I'm Jewish, Sami Irish, whatever, or persecute David because he's Jewish Russian, or persecute Gregory McKelvey, or Micah Rhodes, or whomever. They are cruel and inhumane and targeting Irish people, Jewish people. <sighs> so I apologize to Judy Prosper. And the whole context of the Aristide scenario, it's like, it's really a CIA thing, which I tried to express at the COAB meeting. It's a CIA thing. It's a complicated debate about a series of leaders in Haiti including the removal of Aristide and his reinsertion, potentially by CIA under Bill Clinton's era. And that's what David Keith Davis is talking about. And nobody in America knows much about that. Amy Goodman did a special on it. I heard it years ago. And it was complicated. So his point that, okay, you're working for one dictator, now you're working for another. That means human rights abuses. It's an attack on the human rights abuses that happened under Mayor Hills, that happened on Yom Kippur, on a Jewish high holy day, the highest holy day of the year. So I don't hear Tracy Reeve swastika collecting city attorney saying Yom Kippur stampede was a human rights violation, arms were broken, women were pepper sprayed, disabled people's rights were violated, ADA was violated. They have not fully come forth with a comprehensive human rights package. So, well, I believe it is absolutely correct that Judy Prosper should function in an atmosphere of non-harassment, in an atmosphere fully respective of her civil rights, even if she's being asked to do dirty work by the dirty, filthy dictator Mayor Hills. That is the actual point. The actual point isn't racism. Keith's not racist. He grew up in Baltimore. He likes black women. He may be the most hot-headed, condescending, annoying guy you ever met, but he was misunderstood, I hope. But I think there's some kind of way that he is unaware of his male privilege, unaware of his white privilege, even being Jewish. So, 
hopefully he learns something. Most likely he won't. And same to the city. Most likely they won't learn anything. And they won't understand why persecuting, persecuting, persecuting is bringing out the worst in someone. So I want to apologize to Judy Prosper for what David Keith Davis said. And I would like to apologize to the city for how that ruined my speech, how I was not able to fully articulate and focus on what I wanted to say because the whole atmosphere was so disrupted by the, the anguish that his filthy language evoked. I apologize that my apology wasn't extreme or, I, I, in a way, I think what happens, and it might have been the case with Mr. Simon, that sometimes people are stunned into silence and stunned into paralysis of not knowing what to do. And I think it was so overwhelming to know that a Jewish man is being persecuted by the city and then so overwhelmed to hear him lash out at the black attorney. That that was like, whoa, wait a minute, Jewish people and black people have been like this, like fighting in the civil rights struggle. So you would hope that that kind of disruption of that historic alliance would not be occurring. But the, um, the notion that Mr. Simon is somehow to blame or that his, like, assertion that we are amicus curiae, that's kind of, woohoo, I'm a friend of the court. Yes, of course I am, because I'm doing the work that the BHU should be doing by helping to get someone into the hospital who desperately needs mental health care and physical and biomedical and neurological health care. I got John Rose at Internal Affairs to thank me for my work. That's the beginning of recognition. We all deserve recognition for what we do. And I have tried to do that with Davis and say, thank you for your film work. Thank you for filming Kyle Nice pepper spraying a woman in the face. Thank you for filming Barry Joe's ADA rights being violated when he's being retaliated against in City Hall Chamber. David Keith Davis has done a lot of good work. And let's say Judy Prosper has too. Why can't we have a system of mutual recognition? Why does she get $100,000 and he gets constantly arrested? There is a level of inequity there that hasn't been balanced. And I can't say it enough because I'm such a feminist. I can't stand for women to be insulted. And I think some of the um, boys just like to be constantly insulting. And as for his issue with Miss Osinak, she said that he was upskirting her when he was filming her from above her head as she was sitting down. So him discussing her false accusations is now being interpreted as a harassment of him to her. She needs to apologize for her either misstatement or false accusations, whichever it was. Was it persecution or was it a misstatement? She never corrected it, and then at that point it becomes a persecution because it's designed to destroy his credibility, his character. It's a setup. So that's a pretty simple cut and dry thing. And I think, yes, he is insensitive about space. If he is making her uncomfortable, he should be able to translate that, but he can't because he's a man and he has a man brain, which can't think through things like that. And the sad thing is, is I reached out to him when he was hurting from being persecuted. I reached out to him because his PTSD is severe. So there's no allowance being given to the ADA for all the people that the city likes to coerce and, and have intimidation and adverse action and retaliation against. So the fact that the city is allowed to have a runaway carriage and fail to respect the law over and over and over again, abuse people into this dark place where they're lashing out at anyone they can in a courtroom, that's not being addressed. So I hope if we do have a future hearing or if the city moves forward with their frivolous appeal that they're voting on on the 7th, that we will get to the point where their failure to respect ADA, failure to abide by the anti-retaliation clause and their targeted harassment, their racialized harassment, their sexist harassment, all of that can be assessed as a part of their failure to comply, as well as other issues of non-compliance in, in the entire settlement agreement. So casting off Simon's authority at this point, I just... I'll cut it short here, because we're at 14 minutes. But I might have more to say.